Hello friends, The Bourbon Nerd here. Welcome to lesson 14 in my bourbon school. So today I will cover sour mash and sweet mash. So I'll go into a little bit of details what they are and the differences. And to take me through this lesson, I am going for Wilderness Trail. I've done that once before and why I've chosen Wilderness Trail this time, this is a ride, the last one was a bourbon, um, will become evident at the end of the lesson, I think. Right. So before we get further, a quick toast. Cheers, y'all. Thank you for watching. It's yeah, amazing. Thank you. All right. So sour mash specifically, let me tackle that first. So it's a source of many misunderstandings. And the most famous one that at least I've come across is that if you ever um, have heard about this TV show called The West Wing, um, as you can see on the screen, there's a little bit of a screenshot from that one where the president basically says that their bourbon needs to be uh, made in Kentucky. I and mean, if it's outside Kentucky, it's called sour mash. That is completely false. Uh, all parts of this um, sentence is completely false. So you will see that um, uh, by the end of this uh, lesson here. But it's, it's quite fun because they definitely got that as wrong as it's possible to get. So as you may remember from one of the first lessons, you know, bourbon can may be made in all the 50 states and sour mash can also be made in Kentucky, but we'll get on to that in a second. Okay, so what I'll be covering in this lesson specifically, so I will talk about a few terms that you may not have not have heard about before. Mash, I think we covered multiple times in previous lessons. Spend mash may be new to you, and also stillage and backset is a couple of uh, terms that I'll be using in this lesson that you may not have heard about. Of course, I'll tell you what uh, sour mash and sweet mash is. That's sort of the main part of this uh, lesson here. But I'll also go into a little bit details on why some manufacturers choose one over the other. Um, and it's really up to, to preference, as you will see in a few minutes. I have to go into a couple of words on pH levels because that is sort of one of the reasons uh, there's a difference between uh, sour mash and sweet mash. It's not going to be boring. I promise you it's one slide and it's going to take about a minute or something, but we need to revisit that a little bit. And then I'm going to end up uh, with addressing some of the very frequently asked questions, at least I have heard over the last few years when it comes to especially sour mash, but also a little bit uh, sweet mash. All right, let's get into it. So uh, just to talk a little bit about this mash and spent mash and stillage and back set, right? So you may recall from uh, the lesson, I believe that was lesson four, where I just went through the basic high level um, steps of making whiskey. Uh, at one point you get to the mash, which is basically porridge, right? It's all these um, crushed grains with a lot of water and you get this mash, right? So um, what happens after you sort of done with it, it's through fermentation and you sort of need to throw it out. I mean, there are actually two sources um, primarily. One thing, as you can see here, there's a lot of uh, distilleries that simply uh, use the spent mass mash. That's what they call the mass that have already been well spent and they dry it up a little bit and then they give it to the cows and the cows love this. And before you get uh, into this, I mean, there's no alcohol in this. It's way past the distillation process. So there's zero alcohol in it at this point, but they really, really like it. So a lot of farmers, uh, you know, they just drive up to the distillery and get the, this for their for the cattle and, and it's really, everybody likes this idea, right? The other thing you can do though, is that you can also take some of that mash, the spend mash, if you will. And um, sometimes, not all of their stillery uses, but if you can see this machine here on my left here, it's sort of a machine that separates the liquids from the uh, solids. And the solids actually, well, that's for the cows again, I, I guess. And this, um, uh, the liquids, that's actually what you call the back set. Sometimes you don't go into a rigorous uh, filling process like you see here. There's also a little bit of material in it. It's not only liquid, but that's basically it. So the back set is some of the distillation mash that you then take and set back into the process, but I'll cover that in a second. So that's why it's called the back set. If you're um, confused at this point, don't worry, I'll cover it all. I just want to get these terms straight up front. Okay. Right, so what is sour mash? So again, if you remember from lesson four, if you watched that, I mean, 
the production of whiskey, it's pretty much the same everywhere in the world. You prepare your grains and then you um, do the mashing. Like we talked about before, you go into uh, the fermentation part and then you go into the distilling uh, distillation. And then of course the aging, which I haven't covered here, right? And sour mash is simply that you take some of the portion of the from the fermentation and get set back into the distillation process. And I'll, I'm going to explain in a second why people, why on earth people are doing that. So sour mash is simply the process of taking a little bit out of the first uh, uh, fermentation batch and put back into the mash so we can sort of get the second round again. And there's a very good reason why why people are doing that. You may think it's a little bit like the sourdough process where you um, where you sort of take a little bit of, of the sourdough and use for the next batch. Actually, it's not exactly the same, but I'll, I'll cover that at the end, I, I promise, right? So that's basically sour mash. And the reason why it's called sour mash is because, um, uh, I know it sounds gross, but uh, this uh, bag set uh, contains a lot of dead yeast and all other nu nutrients, right? And um, they actually help lower the pH level uh, a little bit. So, and, and when you lower the, um, uh, the pH le level in anything it becomes more acidic, as you may recall from school, uh, and hence the word sour. So that, that, that is basically why it's called sour mash, because the pH is lowered a little bit. And why this is done, I'll cover in a second, but that's basically why uh, they're using the name sour. All right. So on this topic of pH, um, so actually pH stands for potential hydrogen. Um, and I'm not gonna cover exactly what that means, but it's sort of the presence of uh, hydrogen and also how active the hydrogen ions uh, are in, in the whatever liquid or material that you're choosing. Uh, this scale was actually invented like, I think in 1893 or something by a Danish scientist. Um, and it sort of goes from one to 14, seven smack in the middle, that's sort of uh, water. And it's also very close to the body itself. And then everything that goes below seven is more and more uh, acid, acidic. Uh, and of course, uh, higher, higher uh, pH, you get more and more alkaline, it's more and more basic. Um, uh, that's another word for it, right? And, and funny enough, you know, this content on your stomach is probably around one and a half, two, two and a half in dogs, even lower. So, so pretty interesting that you have that also inside your body, right? So, but when you put this, uh, these dead G cells from the back set, into the new mesh, uh, you actually lower it a little bit from the seven down to maybe five or six or something like that. I'm not sure exactly. It probably also differs depending on the amount of back set. All right. So the advantages here, uh, there, there are some significant advantages of doing this. And I would say it's been done for many, many, many years, maybe 150 years or something like this. So the number one reason why you want to do this is probably when you put these dead yeast cells and it lowers the pH so it gets more acidic, um, uh, it actually kills unwanted germs and bacteria. And that is really good because when you make whiskey and you make, you know, distill this beer and you distill that into whiskey, uh, hygiene is super, super, super important. You can kill an entire batch if you don't control sorry, your hygiene there. Um, so lowering the pH will do it for you. Or of course, you need to clean everything out, but but you can, you can actually, you have a serious help from these uh, dead yeast cells and, and all the other nutrition because the pH level is much lower. So that's, that's a really, really big portion of the reason why there. Um, also, if you, you can imagine, and this is also a little bit like sourdough, even if it is not the same. I mean, once you take a little bit from the previous batch and put it into the new batch, there's also consistency, right? So there's some consistency in the flavor profile. And that is another reason why some of the uh, uh, distillers really are going for a sour mash because it sort of gives consistency in the way the distillist is tasting. And also, believe it or not, all these dead yeast cells, and again, all the nutrients as well, it's actually really good for the new uh, yeast cells. They actually live off of this. So you get, not only do you um, get better hygiene, you also uh, get sort of like a boost when you start the fermentation process again. So this is really, really, really a uh, uh, number of, of very good advantages here, which is my why most of the manufacturers out there um, actually use um, sour mesh, but we will come on to that compared to sweet mesh. All right. So what is sweet mesh then? 
So remember this picture from before, you took a little bit of from the, the back set from the fermentation and got into the new mesh. And sweet mesh is where you don't do that. I know, boring, but that is basically it. Sweet mesh is that you do not put the back set in. You just start from scratch every time. A new mesh, a new fermentation, etc. Nothing from the previous batch is in there, and that's called sweet mesh. I explain in a second why it's called sweet mesh. So basically, they're very close cousins, but um, you, you just take out that extra loop of getting uh, some of the back set back, back in the in the sour mesh process out of the picture, and then you have sweet mesh. Okay, and the reason why it's called sweet mesh is that. If you, of course, if you don't lower the pH with the back set, as you can imagine, the, um, the pH stays more neutral, I mean, closer to seven. And if you do have um, sort of more neutral, it doesn't sound uh, start as acidic. So, so the distillate actually tastes a little sweeter. And uh, there's a lot of um, manufacturers that, uh, that, that prefer this. So the, the, the name comes from the fact that once you, once you make the white dog, um, uh, based on the sweet mash process. Uh, of course, I guess it's a matter of opinion here, but but uh, I've heard people refer to the ma ma white dog tasting a little bit more sweet, hence the name sweet mash. All right. So what are the advantages then with the sweet mash process? Um, so again, sweeter tasting distillate, um, uh, of course, you could say that that also leads to slightly sweeter whiskey. Uh, I'm not really sure that holds water because uh, there's some pretty sweet whiskey out there using the sour mash process, but at least you have a better starting point. It is actually also easier if you are a relatively small uh, dist uh, distillery and you have different mash bills. And remember mash bills is sort of the recipe between corn and rye and wheat and barley and all that. Um, because if you have various different uh, mash bills, then you don't have to save back set from the, another um, uh, run that has to be exactly the same mash bill. So, so you have to remember that. Of course, if you use a sweet mash process, you just start oh, well, it doesn't really matter if you have any back set list left uh, from the previous batch. But one serious disadvantage of the uh, sweet mash process is that hygiene needs to be an, an insane level. You need to be very, very careful that you clean out everything um, to a dot and a T, you know, it, it really, really needs to be very careful. Um, and, and that's of course something that is good, of course, but um, you need to factor that into your production method and and basically everything needs to be cleaned out completely every time. So that is definitely a disadvantage. So is sour mash more popular than sweet mash? Um, as you can see on this graph here, uh, yeah. So this graph just sort of indicates that 98% of all manufacturers use sour mash and 2% uses uh, sweet mash. It's actually impossible for me to get uh, exact figures, and I would say it may even be closer to 99 and 1. So almost every manufacturer out there uh, choose the sour mash process simply because um, it, it gives more consistency, you know, it lowers the pH, and uh, um, also hygiene doesn't need to be at an insane level, although everybody likes hygiene, of course, but it sort of takes a little bit of the trouble out of the manufacturing process. So it's, it, this is a significant uh, difference between the two methods here. So now 99.1, 99.1, 99.1% or 98, 2%, I mean, who is actually then doing sweet mesh? Um, and I actually found three manufacturers. So there are a handful out there, maybe more than a handful, let's say 10 uh, around the US that makes uh, whiskey with the sweet, sweet mesh process. And here are three ones. So, and they all make fantastic whiskey. Um, the one further to the left is actually from the manufacturer that I'm drinking today, Wilderness Trail. I wouldn't say they invented the sweet mash process, they didn't because it's probably been around for a while. Um, but they, they are very, very successful uh, with the whiskey. It's phenomenal whiskey. In fact, I'm going to drink a little bit more. Mm. So they, they definitely nailed this process. The one in the middle here is from Peerless. Um, I remember I was at a um, tour. Um, I, I got a tour by the um, CEO of PLS and I met the uh, master distiller. And I just remember uh, next to one of the, I think it was one of the fermentation tanks, there was just a big sign that said, you know, 
uh, always sweet mash or something or sweet mash always something like this so so they're really adamant about this and also the one closest to me uh, maybe you don't know that too well is from castle and key the old eh taylor distillery which is relatively new on the scene uh, it's only been a couple of years since they released their their first uh, whiskey products and they also use the uh, sweet mash a process and there are a handful more i guess in the thai us so something very very few people are doing but these are some prominent examples all right all right and then we arrived at the frequently asked questions so i've selected uh, six questions that i hear quite frequently um, and they're sort of source for confusion so i'll just thought i'll take you through them real quick so first is so does the sour mash process produce whiskey that tastes sour? So no, right? As we just discussed, you know, the whole purpose is to just lower the pH a little bit in the initial phase of the mashing. Uh, it has no consequence really whether the uh, uh, whiskey is sour or sweet. Uh, you will get, get nice sweet whiskey uh, if you use the sour mash uh, process, so no problem there. If my bourbon tastes sweet, is it because of the sweet mash process? Well, it's tempting, right? But not really, uh, because even though, as we just discussed, the distillate may um, uh, taste a little bit sweeter, you know, after the full distillation process, uh, you know, and, and the whole aging process, rather, um, is sort of the, the difference between sour and sweet mash is very, very small. So the answer would be not really. So it's not something you should factor in. Does sour mash produce better whiskey than sweet mash? Um, no, I would say, because some of the best bourbon in this entire world uh, is made from a sour mash um, uh, method. Um, I'm, the sweet mash uh, um, method is also very, very good, but generally uh, n no one is better than the other one. As we just be discussed before, it's just a matter of which sort of method that you prefer. And then number four, a fun one. So can I make a whiskey sour from a whiskey based on sweet mash? Of course you can. Um, uh, you know, most whiskey sours are made from uh, whiskey, of course, the sour mash, but you could also make one from, from sweet, sweet mash as well. I actually made one uh, not too long ago, actually with Witherness Trail. It was absolutely phenomenal. So it has nothing to do with that. The sour and whiskey sour is uh, more referring to the lemon juice rather than the whiskey. So. And then number five, is sour mash bourbon different from normal bourbon? No, it's not. So sour mash bourbon and bourbon is sort of like the same. I mean, some of course is meat mash, another one is sour mash, but uh, normal bourbon is probably sour mash bourbon since 98, 99% of all the bourbons made this method. So the answer would, would be no. And then finally, is sour mash the same principle as sour dough? And I put in there, not really, because, uh, you know, from sourdough, if you ever made that, you take a little bit of the uh, uh, new batch and f save it. And then for the next batch you're going to use, uh, you sort of, uh, it, it includes a lot of, you know, um, uh, yeast, etc., and it sort of kickstarts the sourdough process in the next batch. It's not the same with sour uh, mash because all the yeast cells are long dead, long gone, uh, because you know the temperature has been too high. So, so there's nothing living in a bag set, at least as far as yeast cells are concerned. But it's the primary per, uh, process is lowering the pH, D, uh, the P, <laughs> pH, D, the pH um, but not sort of uh, add yeast cells again to the next batch like sourdough. So it's not the same. So. Um, that was what I uh, had selected for the lesson today about sweet mash and sour mash, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for listening and cheers.